Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Uh, my partner John Coleman and I have the pleasure once again to share with you our love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrica. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Art. Hello, John. Hi, Michelle. It's always great to see you. Um, I it crossed my mind the other day that I was being, uh, I don't know when this became a, a verboten topic, but I was being judgmental. And you, I, I, oh, <laughs> believe huh. me. Yeah, that was me. So anyway, it, it harkened back to many, many years ago when all of a sudden somewhere in the society, we, we can't be judgmental. And I thought to myself at that, as I was catching myself being judge, judging somebody, um, that it's kind of a human trait that we we all uh, evaluate, uh, you know, not just what's going on uh, constantly, but the people we're, we're dealing with. And it struck me that it's a really, uh, the, the difficulty is not that we judge, you know, somebody. It's, it's judging somebody close to you that you love or a business partner, let's say with, with art, a spouse, a wife, a, a child, childhood is different because you're a parent, you have a certain responsibility, but judging people you love and know seems to be a dangerous path, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and you're right. You know, we humans, you know, we have likes and dislikes. We, you know, we like things a certain way. We have our preferences, right? We're comfortable with some things and not so thrilled with other things. And, and, and there's nothing like really wrong with that per se. You know, we, part of us is a personality and ego, and we have a sense of what, you know, feels better to us, what's right and what's wrong. And a lot of these, you know, maybe assessments you could call them are, are pretty benign. Like, you know, I prefer coffee, you might prefer tea, or I like sleeping in on the weekends and, you know, you like to get up early, you know? And um, the key is to really discern the difference between like our preferences and our judgments. And judgments often have like a critical, um, or, you know, I see, I'm looking down on you and I see something less than in you. And that's where we can get ourselves into trouble. Mm. Yeah. And it's particularly, it seems to me, uh, the closer you are to somebody, the, the more tricky it is to, to uh, uh, for lack of a better phrase, be judgmental about them, to judge them. Yeah. And also, well, by the way, using, using the word judgmental, uh, even though you could, uh, a judge may decide something's good. Uh, that's not, that's not in relationships between people. Uh, we're not uh, judgmental is not a very positive term. Right. Right. And I think it's, it's, it's kind of an overloaded term and I'm not sure, you know, many people use that interchangeably, the word judgment. I mean, there's the word discernment, which I tend to prefer, which has sort of a, you know, we're assessing, we're noticing, we're gathering our own insights and wisdom about something. I mean, that's a little different, but judgments become problematic when we believe we know what's right for another person. So yeah. we start shooting on the other, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah. Um, that, they that. should get more exercise. Why don't they stop watching so much TV? Or, you know, didn't they say they were going to talk to their boss about getting a raise? And so we're really starting to, um, you know, letting our judgments of others, especially those close to us, right, kind of take over. Yeah. That's that where it's really a problem. Yeah, it, it becomes, uh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You ought to do this. Why don't you? Yeah, and the finger, right? Like, there's the finger yes. there that we're pointing, yeah. right? Yeah, which yeah. I do to Art all the time. Art, why don't you? But, you? but, John, you're so invariably correct and provide me with such <laughs> meaningful uh, wish, uh, yeah. observations that I'm constantly around you improving myself because, <laughs> you know, it's that with such love and warmth. Uh, but getting back to uh, the truth, uh, <laughs> uh, it seems to me, though, that if if uh, you or your partner is being overly judgmental, it may be perhaps because you're finding things that you just don't like. You don't like that lifestyle. And it's probably an indication of uh, they may or may not have a, a lousy uh, uh, of. Uh, uh, trait uh, that really irks you 
And unless you can get over that, it, to me, it's a, a sign not of a fault in what you're, you're observing, but that you just don't like it. And you either have to figure out how to get along with that, or maybe you have a different issue that, you know, if you can't confront that issue and resolve it, uh, maybe the other person just likes to do what that person likes that they put salt on everything before they taste it. <laughs> okay. That blow that blows my mind, you know, it's, but if it bothers you that much and maybe there's an issue there that it's your problem, not their problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, basically when we have a judgment about another person, there's really two impacts here, right? So the first is on our partner and they're experiencing us judging them. And then what happens here when I'm judging, right? So if we're going to judge our partner, you know, about something or other, they can start to feel criticized or shamed, and they might start to feel our contempt. And we've talked about this in other videos, but there's research from the Gottman Institute about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And this is something that is basically proven to be, to, you know, can predict the end of a relationship, you know, contempt and criticism. So it doesn't feel good for the other person, right? I mean, that's clear. However, the other impact is on us. So when I'm feeling judgmental, and I've totally noticed this myself, and I did way too much of this when I was married, um, I'm, I don't feel good. I'm so caught up in what the other person's doing, I start to feel like I'm better than them. I'm right, and they should be doing this. And, but really, like, I am so far in their business, and you know, presuming I know what's right for them, it's like, Who's home? Who's in here <laughs> living my life, yeah. attending to what's true for me? Mm. So what do we do so, about it? Yeah, that's the question. How, how do you deal with it? Yeah, yeah. Well, the key to, to recognize it really is that to recognize our, the impact on ourselves. And um, one, of our, um, one of my mentors talked about feeling judgment is like taking a toxin, like feeling something toxic in, in his own body. It's like when he feels judgmental, he feels the stress of it in his body. So it's a reminder that like, I don't want to feel this judgment. This doesn't feel good to me. And um, it's stressful to try to always be right and to try to be in control. It takes a lot of emotional energy. So the way to really um, attend to it is just, you know, there's that thing where you're pointing your finger at someone. Well, one finger is going towards them. There's several other fingers pointing back at us, right? <laughs> That's yeah. kind of like, a good reminder. And um, the other thing I like to think about is when we're like, um, if we're driving a car, I might invite people to, you know, join in with me, join in my life, but I don't want them taking the wheel for me. Similarly, I don't want to be taking the wheel for someone else, right? So it's essentially the way to do it is to pause, <laughs> look within, slow down, you know, use mindfulness, get curious. What is going on in me? Yeah. What does this mean about me? Hmm. Yeah, that's good advice because we do get caught up. Um, I know when I do that, I get caught up in, uh, you know, their business, if you will, or as Art used the example, putting putting salt on uh, their food and it drives them crazy. It does. It drives me or it drives the accuser because that's what you're doing. <laughs> exactly you're people it drives the accuser crazy it doesn't feel good hmm. yeah yeah and sometimes you know our judgments are about you know we want something better for them you know we know that they're maybe struggling with their health or they're you know procrastinating about talking to their boss about the raise or you know whatever but it's like if we can tune below the actual behavior that our partner might be doing there's usually care and concern and love, right? Yeah. So to yeah. kind of like get past that initial, there's, a, I mean, you know, we're going to have that impulse sometimes. So like, ah, they're, they're doing that. Wait a second. Come back over here. Slow down. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be judging them. Why does this matter to me? Because I love them. I care. And to come back into that deeper feeling and truth, that yeah. can really help. And it's practice, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. It is. It's. It's. Um, you know what I think it. It might be is you have to get back to the love, mm -hmm. instead of the criticism. You have to get back right. to the love, which is really partly accepting them for who they are. 
eat, whether it's something small like putting salt on, you know, too much salt on their food, um, or something more serious, you know, a, a, some habit they have that. Uh, but you're right. It's great advice. Pause. Stop yeah. looking at yourself. What's it doing to you? Yeah. Right. I learned and, something and just... else very valuable from you uh, uh, today, uh, which is in the future, I'm going to, when I point at somebody, I'm going to point <laughs> with all my fingers that way because <laughs> Instead you know, of... I don't, I, I don't want to think it's, that it's I'm not that. making a poor judgment. <laughs> it's that. Yeah. 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 Right, right, right. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, it's like, do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Do I want to build connection with my partner or do I want to create distance? And then get curious and pause. So and That's a really good point. So there's a, it, there's a certain amount of ego in this kind of you ought to, why don't you, you know, accusation uh, stuff. It, it's It's... Partly wanting to be right, doing on my way. Yeah, and what I've found for myself and also with people that I've worked, because some people, this is a real challenge for them in a relationship with, with another. They have a lot of judgments come up, and it's it's toxic, right? It's hard. What do you do with sure. it? And and so to let go, to learn to let go of it, um, and to build this muscle, to practice building this muscle, is like liberation. Because yeah. you don't, you're freed up from this. I mean, judging, oh my God, it takes up a lot of cycles. It's liberation. And yeah. um, and way more harmony and love can blossom in that, you know, in that field. So as we've been discussing this, I just, a, a song flew into my head. Oh no, uh, If song. you remember, and Art will remember, uh, the musical Bye Bye Birdie. Yeah. Mm. There's What's a song the in there where... where... <laughs> Yeah, because we why, were perfect why, in every way. Why can't they be like we were perfect in right. every way? Yeah, <laughs> What's the with kids today. Yeah, but it's true. It's that's what we're doing when we're being judgmental. Mm. It's it's uh, why can't they be like we were? Why can't you do it my way? Yeah, mm -hmm. Michelle, this has been great advice. Uh, now the question is, can I put it to use <laughs> next next time I start pointing the finger? <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.